you will hear uh, Haydn, you will hear uh, Mozart and Beethoven. Um, so it'll be a different sound, and hopefully it'll be very immediate. Um, Haydn was the rage of the day. Everybody knew that he was a great composer. They called him Papa Haydn. He managed to joke in music. He didn't seem to take it that seriously like Beethoven did. And his music is full of surprises. It's beautifully written, and you're sitting there, you're listening to a nice melody, and then suddenly there'll be a bump or something like that. And he'll shake you out of your complacency and make you listen again uh, 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 to the pieces. He's just a wonderful, really human composer. He's us. Haydn. Mozart and Beethoven are more gods. Well, uh, it was a kind of accident that I was invited uh, with the orchestra. Um, but I'd always had it in my head that I would love to work with period instruments um, seriously. I'd done a bit of it in the past, maybe 15, 20 years ago, and it, uh, as I thought, it made me uh, think a lot more about the music. Um, one gets deeper into it, you discover new things every day. So um, it was just right for me to work with this particular uh, orchestra of real experts. And they come from all over the world uh, to work in uh, certain periods of the year together. Uh, they're a wonderful um, group of human beings, as well as being absolutely top experts in their, uh, w with their instruments, with their playing. So for me, it's a tremendous luxury. An orchestra is a great collection of highly trained musicians playing different instruments, strings, woodwinds, brass, percussion, harps. Uh, and it is probably one of the most interesting um, collections of human beings together because all those people who play in orchestras nowadays have worked very hard to join an orchestra. Many, many years of studying on their instruments. Uh, it's not easy to find positions in orchestras. Uh, and nowadays we have incredible quality of orchestral playing. The orchestra of the 18th century is about 40 or 45 players. But there's a big difference in the sound. And for a Mozart symphony, you don't really want this brilliant quality that the modern trumpet has. The other big example are the kettle drums, the timpani. Uh, modern timpani are big, um, and uh, very often they're played with plastic heads, not the uh, calf heads that they used to be. With the orchestra of the 18th century, the drums are really tiny in comparison to the modern kettle drums, but they've got a real click on the sound. It's a wonderful click. It's like a rhythm section in a pop group. It's there and it's, it's immediate and uh, it's colorful and it's exciting. The flutes, the flutes play wooden instruments. The wooden flutes had the wonderful symbol of the quality of out in the woods, poetic lovers, cooing away, birds cooing away. Those are the, those are the differences that, that people are, will immediately notice. Uh, thank you for Wednesday. It was absolutely wonderful accompaniment. And congratulations, Michael, with that wonderful food solo. Bravo! <laughs> okay, um, let's play through the last movement first of all and then do bits of the other movements. Music is a very, very special thing. There are no words. But there are some things that you can't put into words that music can express. 
conductor's job is to try to get those black and white notes that the uh, composer has written down um, out and communicated to an audience. And there are many different ways of doing that. Um, and I'm particularly interested in thinking about style. What did the orchestra sound like? And it's very interesting in the last 30 years, we have discovered all this again with the orchestra of the 18th century. And what I like to try and do, at least what I like to try to think of, is that I'm performing the piece as though it's for the first time. The modern world can do a wonderful, what we call sostenuto, another very, very smooth uh, playing. Uh, the Baroque bow doesn't do that quite so easily, but what it does better than the modern bow is real articulation. So you go, you can hear that in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the string players, a kind of articulation that we're only used to, say, piano playing. And of course, that gives the music a tremendous energy and color. All these are very interesting differences. conductors, it's difficult for them. Orchestras don't like to be conducted by young conductors because they want a kind of teaching figure in front of them that they, that they follow. And, you know, I've suffered with it because I started conducting when I was 25. And, uh, you know, after 40, I was beginning to realize that well, I know a little bit about it. Now I'm 70. I know really quite a lot. I can give them, uh, give them quite a lot, but it's a long process to become a decent conductor. I was a very lucky man. Um, uh, I was lucky when I started. After all, I started when I was seven, and that piano behind me, my parents gave me when I was 12, which was an extraordinary thing. And uh, um, I went to music college, it was great. And at the age of somewhere around 24, 25, uh, I was conducting already, having wanted to be a conductor from the age of 12. And I saw my first orchestra concert when I was 11. And I thought, wow. I knew at the age of 10, I was gonna be a musician. I could play the piano quite well uh, by 10. And I sang in the cathedral choir. So m all my spare time was, was with music. And I knew by 10, I wanted to be a musician. My parents were not musical at all, but they let me go on with it. And uh, when I said I want to be a conductor, okay. And I, <laughs> this, this sounded a bit strange, but at my school in Belfast, Wednesday afternoons were sports day. And I've never been a sporting person. But um, fortunately, the local orchestra um, rehearsed on a Wednesday afternoon. So I was given permission not to do sports, but to go to the orchestra. And I did that for five or six years, and I learned all the standard repertory. There was a very kind conductor, and the orchestra musicians were very helpful. And so by the time I went to London to continue my studies, I knew quite a lot. I had really quite a background. You didn't really need a conductor. Uh, the musicians could do it themselves uh, because they were only playing one type of music at that time. It's like nowadays, pop music. Pop musicians know exactly how to play a piece when they see it in front of it or they've worked it out uh, orally. They just know that from instinct. They're playing this kind of new music all the time. 
That was the same in the 18th century and even right into the 19th century because people played only contemporary music. They didn't play music of the past. That only begins to happen somewhere in the 1880s again, 1900s, uh, but right until maybe the Second World War, many symphony concerts had new music in it all the time. Uh, and now we're a little bit more of a museum that we have. A, uh, we're looking back to great pieces of, of the past and not playing so much contemporary music as we ought to. So we're in a different era now than when I was a student. What I can't remember how many. Yeah, 50 years ago now, um, where you kind of interpreted things sort of like other people did. Uh, you tried to get that great warmth of sound out of the orchestra. But then one finds out that they didn't, in Beethoven's time, have that warmth. What they had was artic articulation and energy and great beauty in the sound as well. They didn't play with continuous vibrato. Our modern orchestras play with continuous vibrato, but that only started uh, in the 1920s because of the famous recordings from, uh, from uh, Philadelphia with Stokowski and Ormandy. And of course, these were the first recordings that were available universally. And people listened to them, oh, that's very nice. Why don't we all play like that with continuous vibrato? But still people already, teachers in the 1920s, were saying it's bad taste to play with continuous vibrato. Yes, vibrato, but only as a kind of decoration. And that's what players, like the players in the orchestra of the 18th century, have learned how to do. Um, and it's very fascinating because it makes the sound so much fresher, so much more immediate. The speeds can be faster. It's fascinating. I and mean, we've only discovered that in the last 30 or 40 years by the players who have taken the very brave step of playing original instruments. Um, which are more difficult to play than modern instruments. And that's what the orchestra of the 18th century is trying to rediscover. We know that the concertmaster or the leader of the orchestra was immensely important and could make the decisions about, uh, uh, about cueing instruments, about the bowing style and all that sort of thing. And the conductor may just have beat time in, 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 front, of the, uh, in front of the players.
my particular interest is to try to make the orchestra play it like chamber music and that me as a conductor I give the ideas or I do correct things and all that stuff but I much prefer the musicians to work like what they would have worked and they would have been using their ears they've been using their eyes and they could do it themselves really without this dictator in front of them. Well, we've had so much wonderful music written in the past, which is so incredibly idealistic and wonderful. These pieces will never die. Mozart will never die. But maybe we need a new way of showing these to the audiences. Um, in some places there are problems of getting the audience in to a traditional sym symphony concert. So maybe we should think as planners that we don't have a traditional symphony concert. Maybe the, instead of the audience coming to the orchestra in a beautiful concert hall, the orchestra should go to the people. Sometimes these pieces were even repeated in the concert if there was a lot of applause. And we've lost that. We listen to it, in my opinion, a little bit over seriously. Let's perhaps go back to something that is a little bit more human, human and, you know, straightforward. <laughs> so much out there. There's so much music to be discovered uh, all the time. I'm constantly surprised at about, about how little I know and yet how much I've done. Very fascinating to look at these great pieces of music in a different way. 
in a way that perhaps is closer to what the composers meant. <laughs> 